Welcome, wonderful person, to my Inspiring Colleagues series. Today, I am devoting this session to my inspiring colleague, Joe Dispenza. I first heard those two words together, Joe and Dispenza, about seven or eight years ago, and I was sitting in front of Independence Hall with a dear friend of mine, Jorge Luis Delgado. He's an inspiring colleague of mine to come in a later session. And my friend, Marlene Kiesler, who was the director of a healing arts school that I was part of, also an inspiring colleague. And I was talking to Jorge about my vision of the kind of organization that I wanted to bring to the world. And here we are now in this Prosper Plus, powered by the Galactic Council, Women, All Genders Welcome, this incredible, more than even planetary force, a galactic force, just knowing that we come from something so greater than what we see with our myopic vision or our conditioned mind. And he said to me when I was describing what I wanted to bring, I said, well, how about like, um, I said, I, I see this like organization and it's, I can see it as, as like the American Association of Lightworkers. And Jorge said, bigger. And I said, uh, the North American <laughs> Association of this and that. He said, bigger. I said, North and South American, bigger. And I finally said, the planetary organization or whatever it was at the time, there were so many things that I was saying that for, for light and power. And he said, and at that moment, Independence Hall, the bell on top of it started to strike three. And the chills that went through me and him and Marlene as we were experiencing this. And he said, now you're getting closer. And so I talked to him about this vision I had about this planetary organization, about those coming together. At that point, it was for people that were formally studying energy healing and light work training. And now what I know to be true, and I knew it then too, is that everyone is a light worker. Everyone is made of light. We it's just what we are. Love in motion is light. Whatever the internal greater is, God, great spirit, Jesus, Buddha, Baba, science, nature, love, source, God is universe, all the wonderful names, higher self, higher power. We, that is love. That is the purity of love, which is not like, and that love in motion is light and let there be light. And then we are made of light. I mean, you just need to look at it on anything under a microscope to see the fascinating movement, even in the things we think are very dense, like a stone or a piece of wood or furniture or steel. It's just rich with vibration and movement. So Jorge said to me, as you do this, seek out Heart Math and Joe Dispenza. Now I can tell you, I don't know what happened in the translation of his name. I found Heart Math. I actually went to an amazing five-day seminar of the Heart Math people that run the Heart Math um, Institute. And this was in Tulum, Mexico. And oh my God was that an incredible experience across the board and uplifting experience to be in that, I think it's called the Riviera Maya with that beautiful energy and to be learning about how to bring our hearts and our brains and our beings into coherence. That's the terminology that the heart math people use and Joe Dispenza too, because he was part of that for years. I'm pretty sure about that, although I didn't really look that up. And he has his own organization right now. And so that coherence, which means just to resonate at a similar vibration with, but at a high vibration, at a compassionate vibration, at a grateful vibration, at an appreciative vibration. And I got to talk to the directors of the HeartMath Institute and to talk to them about what I was experiencing and what I wanted to bring to the world. And I, I'm just blessed with the ability to even though that I have fear, and a lot of people are blessed with this ability, but to walk up to the leaders of organizations and say, may I join you for a meal, which is what I did at lunch one day. And, um, and so I did not either write Joe Dispenza's name down or the universe was just hiding it because I wasn't ready yet to discover that body of teaching that he was doing. But when I finally found the teachings of Joe Dispenza, was about four years ago and it came through the miracle called YouTube. You may be watching this on YouTube right now. I love it, it's your tube, you know, it's your portal, it's your wormhole into more. Never before in the history of humanity have we had the most ancient and esoteric teachings combined with the most mainstream cutting edge wisdom 
available at our fingertips for free or just squiggles that really need to be circulated into the energy stream for the value of what this is that I'm bringing, the value of what Joe Dispense is bringing. It's time that we use these power agreements called money because it's all it is, people. The squiggles on a paper or a screen on a coin have nothing but the meaning we attach to it. And we have gotten all back ass words with what has value and what doesn't have value. And we just agreed to it. It's a collective um, very low vibrational belief system. And so we, as we then share into the energy stream, as we circulate, not spend, we are not losing, we are circulating our energy agreements, our power agreements called money into these resources, like YouTube premium or programs or forums, like P Prosper Plus and the Galactic Council of Women, All Genders Welcome, which is powering it, like Joe Dispenza stuff, like Heart Math. I was so happy to circulate squiggles to go not just for the facilities in Tulum, but for the teachings to say that people, scientific researchers, especially in this, in this forum, people who are using the language of science to describe the most ancient mysticism or spirituality that has always been I mean, I always say science doesn't discover anything. It just realizes what, how it's always been. So there's no like artificial pride, but there is a great sense of satisfaction when our mind merges more with universal mind, which we can do at any time. I mean, I always say plug right in. You want to understand what I'm saying more? You want to plug in to the universal mind. You want to feel more of what I'm feeling? Take some deep breaths with me right now, 360 degree breaths. So that prana or life force is not just coming through your nose, which is the recommended way to bring it in. So you don't put your body in fight or flight. And it's also coming in through your skin and your scalp and your belly and your buttocks and your feet. Prana or life force energy is just rides on oxygen molecules. And direct this to the great gratitude and appreciation for the opportunity that you're bringing yourself in this moment to grow, to connect with the deepest power and love within you and to be inspired to up-level your experience and the experience of everyone and everything. And as we breathe together in what Joe Dispenza would call the generous present moment, what I like to refer to, and certainly he and others as well, the eternal now, it doesn't matter when you're receiving this, our hearts will start to beat in more unison. Our body systems will start to resonate with the highest and healthiest healing for us. And our heart rate variability, which is a term of art, will become more balanced, more whole, more synchronized in a way that serves our cellular, emotional, and mental well-being, which all together are fueled by our spirit, by our soul. There's so many practices. If you go on HeartMath, I think it's heartmath.org, there's just a, uh, just a plethora of guided experiences for you to do that in the same way with Joe Dispenza. So many that are gratis on YouTube and on his website, which is probably joedispenza.com or something like that. Just have to type his name in. And there are so many that also say, would you contemplate and be willing to share these power agreements in service to what I'm offering? And oh, the soul of money when it's used that way. I say that what we're doing through Prosper Plus, powered by the Galactic Council of Women, all genders welcome and encouraged, is that we are merging the heart of humanity with the soul of money to create a better world for all, especially you. And every time we circulate those power agreements, we can send it out into the ethers, into the currency, as we call money, into the systems, to up-level everything it touches. And I mean, if you followed how the money goes, I mean, I don't know that it's followable from the technology we have, but I believe that it's like that butterfly, when a butterfly flaps its wings, 
in America, the weather in Singapore is affected. When you circulate squiggles to the Galactic Council, to Prosper Plus, to Joe Dispenza, to HeartMath, to Jorge Luis Salgado, to Wayne Dyer, although I know I don't know he's charging anymore now that he's on the other side. Um, and I like the word charge too, the electric charge. What are you charging? Here's the charge. Here's the energy infusion for you. I shall share it. You shall receive it. And we shall come back and forth. When you do that, oh, the power that you bring to yourself, the upliftment of the soul and what you attract to you is truly valuable in ways that boggle the mind, but oh, the mind can enjoy and tell the body to enjoy as well. So I found Joe Dispenza on a YouTube stream that pops up. I love these algorithms. I know there's a lot that can go wrong when Big Brother is watching you. But first of all, I always say, I think Big Brother should be watching me. I think Big Brother might learn something if they watch me. My phone, I am 99.9% I am .9 sure it was tapped back in the Gulf War years. Um, not the Gulf War. Um, I don't know what we call it when we went to Afghanistan and Iraq, um, if there's a name for those different um, experiences. But I had a brother who was in the military over there actively doing the job that we Americans sent them to do. And I had a brother who worked in and lived in China and went back and forth and I had a dear friend of mine who was, um, was coming to stay with me as an au pair, would come and really help me with the kids and a, and a dear now talk about a soul colleague of mine as well. And she had um, emigrated from Morocco. So I tell you the clicks on my phone and the white unmarked van that was outside my electrical lines, but specifically my telephone lines over and over and over again. I just think <clears throat> I would be a perfect match for that kind of wiretap. And since I am a former litigation attorney and I have had the great unpleasant experience of going through hours and hours reading the recordings from wiretaps, which, oh, sweet Lord. I mean, I, I remember relying on caffeine and sugar, which did not do well for my body to get through those reams of mind numbing boredom to find something that might, you know, intimate some sort of nefarious activity. But I think Anyone that gets a great blessing to listen or read the recordings of our, my best friend, Jeanette. I, I mean, we always said we were like Seinfeld. We could talk for hours about nothing, but it was very enjoyable to us. And it really was about raising the up leveling of love and psychology and how humans work. And we still, to this day, talk about it. She's coming today. She's making some pasta visual and she's going to bring it to me after I finish recording this. And it's like, oh, I mean, it is so wonderful to have people that you can share your joys and your sorrows, your boredoms and your excitements, all in the current, the forward moment of current of growing to more happiness, more harmony, more prosperity, more health, more joy, more, more of the experience of true oneness and knowing what we are so we can enjoy the who we are. So getting back to Joe, Joe and I are friends. I listened to a, um, a few of his um, things this morning, few of his recordings, and he has a new one out. He, Maria Menudo, who was on like um, E or what was one of those shows that was on, that's on one of the major networks, um, and, and like Entertainment Tonight, but it's a different one. And she now has her own um, show that she's doing, and it's called Better Together. She does a few things, I believe, but it's this one is called Better Together. And she went through um, brain surgery and illness and has come through with that lightning bolt of grace to realize that she's more than this body and she has more power within her. So on her podcast series, she interviews people and she interviewed Joe Dispenza um, in June of 2022. And it was really a great interview. And I love listening to Joe Dispenza. Lewis Howes, H-O-W-E-S. He's an extraordinary young man as well. And he has the highest light people on his podcast interview show. And he has this one that he did with Joe Dispenza. That's like two hours that so many of these other forums that bit and pieces together, take parts of it from, I, I see that there might be a new Joe Dispenza and I go to it and I'll, Oh, it's just a, a, a snippet from what he and Lewis did, but still it's so, it's so fresh and so alive. Here's something that you might not know that anytime you're hearing a universal truth, even if you've heard it 4,852 times, times you know squared or tripled it is always ever fresh 
It is always ever fresh. And until you're one of these full God realized enlightened masters, there's always more of that vibrating serenity that you can have access to. So when I hear that, now I still think Joe's human and there's a few things that I don't quite agree with. And I'm sure there's things I say that he doesn't agree with either. And who even knows what the ultimate truth is? But as when we're collaborating, like I love that colleagues and collaborate have the beginning first root, which means to be with, that when we're collaborating together, those differences, they mean nothing. You know, I'm sure you've heard, take what you like and leave the rest. It's, It's how to be in harmony and collaborate with unique personalities. And what Joe has said, which I think is so amazing and brought an awareness to me, is that when we bring our awareness to ourselves through meditation, which I mean, he describes it so beautifully, but what I know meditation to be is anything that happens when you say you're meditating. So it might be like Thich Nhat Hanh when you're walking, washing dishes, when, and you can certainly sit still cross-legged lotus position in a, in a mudra and meditate as well. But that space where you give yourself the ability to, to expand your awareness into something greater. And it's really kind of ironic that you can focus on maybe just a sound to help your mind simmer down and your greater experience of you, the part that connects to the universal mind can open up. The matrix of your mind can receive more than the bullet train of the habitual thoughts that we humans normally think. I wanna read a quote from you that I think is one of the most powerful quotes from Joe Dispenza. Um, first, let me go back to the personality. He says, well, this is a, a semi quote from him. Don't default to your old personality if you want to create higher well being for yourself. Don't default to your old personality. I know that my personality has changed. I say I'm a recovering rageaholic. <laughs> I've gone through, I'm a recovering perfectionist as well. And you know, when, if you're in recovery and recovery, recovery is a lifelong process because those are defense structures that we use when we think we can't handle our feelings or our life or our thoughts or our environments. Oh, and I know when I get back into that, I was recently in pretty intense, the defense structure of perfectionism. I know that I was feeling uh, a lack of my own personal power and it's just information. It's like, oh, what am I defending against? How am I in an adversarial paradigm? How am I not feeling secure and enough as I am? So we really literally do rewire our brain and our personality in alignment with these higher values on the, on the emotional scale, the ones of generosity, of compassion, of inspiration, of imagination, rather than the ones of resentment and fear and scarcity and lack and me versus you, you know, the separateness and more into the service of yourself and humanity than the, I have to preserve my own, you're a danger to me kind of mentality. There's, um, there's a, a, a man who's passed to the other side. His name is Darwin Shaw, and he was one of the followers of Meher Baba, who, I mean, if you know anything about me, I think Mayor Baba and what he has left as his legacy and present moment gifts to humanity is some of the most vibratory alive Um, if not the most vibratory alive, receiving of information I've ever received. Mayor Baba lived from 1894, 95 to 1969 when he dropped his body. Isn't that such a better way of talking about dying, that a soul drops its its body rather than you died? There is no death. There's just a change of state. Abraham Hicks would say you merge into non-physical reality. I mean, and how great is that? And you're not bound by your body and you don't have to worry about pooping anymore. But I, 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 you know, but there's also chocolate here and, you know, sex. Ah, uh, sex. I'm still learning about that one. I'm happy that I'm still learning. Well, and anyway, Darwin Shaw, follower of Mayor Baba said, is that the personality is the storefront for the soul. And what do you want your storefront to look like? Do you want it to look like disease and separateness and pain and betrayal and resentment and fear and judgment? Oh, the archetype of the judge. It's a, it's a tricky wicket being a judge. We can be an observer, but not a judge. 
And so that when I realized that I really have had a personality change, and if I go back into those old personality attributes, it's because I'm feeling highly defended and feel powerless in myself. And that's a place for me to reconnect with who and what I am, not about anybody else. It's for me to connect to who and what I am, to reconnect to my source, my great spirit, God, Jesus, Buddha, Baba, science, nature, love, higher power, higher source, God is universe, all those wonderful words. And so here's the quote that I wanted to read that this quote, I think is something that if you wanted to really change your life would be present from the moment you wake up in the morning and it goes something or, or however you would envision it. So many people are saying things like this, me too. It's, this is from Joe Dispenza. If you're not defined by a vision of your future, you will live within the visions of your past. If you're not defined by the vision of your future, you will live within the visions of your past. You will be confined to repeat the same old, same old. Now, maybe your same old, same old is freaking great and you wanna do that over and over again. Well, Mazel Tov and congratulations to you. That could be a very valid choice for your life path. For me personally, for so many of us right now, the same old, same old needs a high upgrade, needs to be rebooted. The same old, same old, I'm going to do my things the same old way to get the same old results might soothe some sort of fear of you going for yourself in its highest form, but it certainly isn't going to bring you the vibrant health happiness that you can have on this planet that is your soul right and that we all, as we come to the maximum experience of ourselves without harshness or force, it's a very natural momentum. You actually have to work hard to stay within the confines of your past because we, we just suffer and suffer. If we're not accessing that more, what I say is, and I've seen this for years, I don't know if I coined this term. I mean, I didn't hear it before, but I don't know if other people have said it. But about 20, 25 years ago, I realized that I was watching a world where so many people strived for mediocrity, struggled to be mediocre, to be the same, whether the same as their parents or their community has already done it, always done it, whatever it is. But there was so much effort and struggle and strife expended in only going for a capped experience of themselves due to the constructs of their community, their religion, their profession, their family, their friends, whatever it is. You know, Joe Dispenza talks about the unknown uncertain. That equals possibilities. I was just reading what he wrote about that. The unknown uncertain. If we really don't go for the unknown uncertain, if we don't have deep within us the faith that the unknown uncertain is going to be better than the known past, we will put the brakes on and stay back and not evolve, not grow, not prosper. And we will, we will stay limited which we have free will about. But as, as Joe Dispenza and his work shows, there is so much. What I love about Joe Dispenza is his scientific bent. He can talk about the wiring of the brain since he studied so much about neuroscience and what happens. He's doing amazing empirical studies in hospitals with large groups of people about what happens when you come together in this coherence, in this meditative state, in this state where you align your present moment experience of your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings with the state of well being that you want to experience. Tumors are dissolving within a space of days, cancer gone, people that couldn't see, be, that have been blind for years see. I mean, amazing experiences of spontaneous healing in the body, let alone the untold experiences of emotional upliftment are happening through the forums that he is um, a proponent of and, a, and propels into our systems here on the planet. Oh. How wonderful is that? When the rational mind can surrender to the heartful heart, when the rational mind can say, oh yes, this makes sense. This is what I've been longing for from the depth of my being. And when the mind and the heart just can go even more into the isness, I am state. What we can accomplish when we realize that I am the creator personified 
blasphemy to a lot of religions, but I'm a great big believer in blasphemy if that if those rules are not bringing about uniform upliftment of everyone and everything, health for the planet, harmony for the children, for women, for men, for all gender expressions and none, I mean, for all races, for all lands. If they're not doing it, then they need to upgrade. And if, if, if a statement like that is considered blasphemy, well, I just, I'm, I have a lot of dignity about that kind of blasphemy, that kind of paradoxical heresy as it's called in some religions. Oh, God bless us. I mean, I come from a Catholicism training and I still call myself a Catholic, but if you research like I did, the origins of religion, including the origins of Christianity and Catholicism, and you realize that in 325 AD, that the Emperor Constantine of the Byzantine Empire, whose wife had converted to become a Christian, although he was still following the more the, the multifarious, I don't even want to say pagan because I'm such a negative connotation, although pagans are bringing in more of the light of that now, but did not follow Christianity. When that man saw how much power that his wife devoted to the following of Christianity, and when he also then realized that he might die, and if she's right, maybe I want to become Christian, he was, he was baptized, I think, close to his death. But what he did was he convened something called the Council of Nicene in 325 AD, and he had all the Christian bishops, priests, rabbis, whatever they were called back in the day, gather all the writings of the time of Christ, attributed to Christ and disciples of Christ, and convened this council. The Council of Nicene did away with any language that said, you have the path to the divine within you, that you could. Like, it wasn't just that Jesus was the way and the only way and you had to do that exactly and all that stuff that has come about. But here is a way of surrendering to something greater within you, to the greater creator within you. I and my father are one. Again, heresy, but it's the, to Catholicism, but it's the greatest type in any event. So I love about what Joe Dispenza is that he takes it out of religious notions because then that can cause a lot of fighting. And I, I get that and I have great compassion for it. I, I would say I love spiritual because the definition of being spiritual is more inclusive than religious. And if your religion is bringing you harmony and wholeness, oh, that's wonderful too. It's not to dis religions. This is my personal path. But when people like Joe Dispenza or Herbert Benson of Harvard Medical School, who started mind body research decades ago and teaching it to the medical profession, when they come forward and say things like, okay, be more in love with your future than your past. Our routines plug us into our past selves. So this is what I want to bring this to a conclusion about. And this is, I think, the most practical tool that Joe Dispenza's teachings have given me day to day is that if our routines plug us into our past selves and how we start our day in the doctrine of primacy, if you, if you know anything about communication or even law, primacy and recency, what you hear first and what you hear last or what you do first and you do last in experience has much more staying power with the brain than all the stuff in between. When you start your day and shake up your routine a little, if you have a routine where you do this, you brush your teeth, shower, eat your coffee, this is the bathroom, news, or, um, or you have a routine that every day you get up and do the same prayers, the same meditations, or, or the same oatmeal with wild blueberries and whatever it is. I would say as healthy it is or as unhealthy it is, if, you know, whether you're smoking 10 cigarettes and having 10 cups of coffee, assuming that's even bad. I mean, what do I know? If you're doing the same thing every day, you're plugging yourself into your past self and you're not taking advantage of the generous present moment or the eternal now. Oh, so when I get up in the morning and I'm not always successful at it, but we are a work in progress, self-compassion is way more important than self-improvement and is actually the path to this evolution and this higher amperage of our vibratory consciousness and power to create. But when I can get up and do something a little bit different, when I cannot, as Joe Dispenza, most people, me included, especially when I can go, when I'm going through something tough, will immediately review whether I'm allowed to be happy today, what are the problems that I am dealing with? And we re-traumatize ourselves and we wire that magnificent brain to those old, to the past, 
to the moment before, not what we really long for. So if we can give ourselves those moments, when we wake up and we're in that free moment before the flood of the details of our story come in, and we start to remember our future, remember, you know, dismember is to take apart, you know, dismember a body, but to remember, to bring the pieces of the body of our future together, our longing, our vision for our body. You know, if you want to lose weight, wake up and envision yourself in a healthy body at the weight that is healthy for you. If you want to wake up and envision yourself without disease, imagine that. How would it feel to have all of the squiggles in the bank or wherever you keep it that you need? How would it feel to live in a world where when you went outside, you were greeted and everyone greeted everyone? How would it feel to live in a global world where we all act in, in each other's best interest because we are one organism and we all affect one another? Imagine that and then perhaps do something different. Sing a song, dance on your way to your cup of coffee or your news or whatever it is. But when we check our phones, our Facebook, our email, those things that a lot of people do first thing when they get up, what we're doing is we're plugging into other people's visions of the future. We're plugging into our limited visions of our future by linking into the past. And we're missing the power, the ability that we have now to bring about what we long for, what we speak about, what we hope is possible, and it's for us to create. So I wanna thank Joe Dispenza, my inspiring colleague, for all of the richness that he brings to my life, all of the collaboration that he brings to what I, in my uniqueness, can bring to the world, which is kind of a shame-busting organization. Pride and shame, oh boy, they have us led by the short hairs. You know, when you're proud about something, you're going to have to feel shame about something. And healthy pride is dignity. And healthy shame is um, humility. We want dignity and humility, not pride and shame. And the, the Prosper Plus app forum, powered by the Galactic Council of Women, All Genders Welcome, the reason it's called that, it is to dissolve the shame of thinking that you can't be a superhero, that your imagination of your five-year-old self can't come into direct collaboration with that mature, conscious, deeply caring heart that wants to see the children of our world have a healthy, harmonious, um, vibrant life to grow into, not one rife with disease and sickness or adversarial or war or all the things we humans have been doing since we've been recording things. Let's make a new recording, a new story. Let's do it together. Um, I would normally end this forum that I have with opening a book of my inspiring colleague and reading like dialing for discourses, but I listen mostly to Joe Dispenza. He has a book called Being Supernatural and other books too that are oh, oh wonderful. I get it on Audible or read it. It's really great. But I went and just pulled a quote out to read. Um, this quote says, health and wellness become as infectious as disease. We want to live in a world and create a world where health and wellness become as infectious as disease. And since I'm still <clears throat> coughing from that spiky little protein virus called COVID that's all the rage these days, um, yeah, let's have health and wellness be as contagious as the latest variant of that microscopic nefarious, but also having the potential to bring us to so much more. <sighs> Thank you, Joe Dispenza. Thank you for being with me today and sharing my inspiring colleague with me. Love, power, and blessings. Mwah.